What do you get when you try to shove as much battery capacity into a small compact frame? Apparently you get a Dolphin, well in this case, the Dolphin Plus from Quali Sports. In this review, I'm going to walk through all the components, then we'll get into some first person riding footage and finally some third person riding footage where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on this electric bike. But first, let's take a closer look. So did you catch where both batteries are? We're gonna get to that in a second, but first, if you are looking to purchase any electric bike, check out our links in the description. Using those affiliate links before you make your purchase is a free and easy way to support the channel and makes videos like this one possible. Thank you so much for your support. Also check out our shop at shop.ebikeescape.com for some high quality electric bike accessories. All right. Now let's talk about the Dolphin Plus. We need to talk first about battery capacity because it's seriously impressive. 17 and a half amp hours in the dual battery version. That's almost as high as some fat tire electric bikes that weigh 80 or 90 pounds. And then of course, the second selling feature of this electric bike is it's meant to be super compact. Bring it in your house, maybe apartment, it would be a great bike to commute on just because it's such a small form factor. You'll see just how small it is when I fold it up towards the end of the walk around. Quali Sports is a new brand to me, so if you have experience with the company, help me and help others by letting us know how your experience has been in the comment section. Let's talk about price. The Dolphin Plus dual battery that you see here is currently priced at $16.99, usually $18.99, the single battery version is just $13.99, normally priced at $15.99. It's offered in three different colors, navy blue, satin black, and glossy metallic gray. It can hold up to 300 pounds. This bike is meant for riders five foot one all the way up to six foot three. I have it a little bit higher than the minimum insertion point, and there's no problem with me getting full leg extension. And because it is a smaller framed electric bike, it has a low standover height. Diving into the components, we have Quali Sports branded hydraulic disc brakes, two pistons, paired with 160 millimeter rotors. You might be wondering what this is. Stay tuned for when I fold this electric bike. The tires are 20 inches by 2.3 inches wide, Innova branded street tread. We have an integrated front light and there's a rear battery operated light mounted to the seat post. There's three mounting points on the head tube and Quali Sports does offer an optional rear rack. The handlebars can be folded right here and there is a height adjustment as well on the handlebars. In the cockpit, we have rubber ergonomic locking grips matching Quali Sports levers with motor cutoffs. There's a left-hand thumb throttle, bell on the right, and a Shimano seven-speed trigger shifter. The handlebars can be turned to your liking using this quick release. And we have my favorite cell phone mount. This is the Elastocase quick release available at shop.ebikeescape.com. And finally, a monochrome display, power button in the center, pedal assist on the left side, zero all the way up to five, simple battery indicator in the top left, time in the top right, miles per hour front and center, distance currently displayed in the bottom, hitting the power button will change that, over to odometer with average speed in the center, max speed in the center as well as voltage and back to your current speed with the distance. Holding the pedal assist up and down button at the same time will reset the riding time and distance. Confirm that with the power button. Walk mode can be enabled by holding the pedal assist down button, indicator on the right, and finally you can turn on the lights by holding the pedal assist up button and there's an indicator right here. There's also a USB port under the display to charge your device. There's Quali Sports branding here and here. We have folding plastic pedals, push in and turn and flip them up to put them back into position. There's a rear mounted kickstand and the bike comes with front and rear metal fenders, though you will have to install them. The motor is 500 watts. For gearing, we have 14 to 28 teeth in the rear and in the front, a 52 tooth single sided chain ring. This is plastic. The derailleur is a Shimano Tourney 7-speed entry-level derailleur. And as you can see, the bike is a class 2 electric bike. Included is a basic Velo saddle, but be sure to check out our electric bike accessories list as well as our shop for some more comfortable options. 
Quality Sports includes a 3 amp charger, which will charge the 17 and a half amp hour battery from empty in about six hours. Now there's a couple charger ports here. The C2 battery charger port is up here, but if you buy the dual battery version, you'll wanna use this port here because that will charge the frame battery first and then the seat post battery. Due to the frame and the seat post battery, there's actually a maximum insertion point so you don't hit the ground with the battery because it does come through. And there's also a minimum insertion point which we see on all bikes. Underneath the frame here is where you disconnect the seat post battery. I'll show you just how large the seat post is. First I'll unscrew, undo the quick release and pull the battery all the way through the frame. So there you have it, a 48 volt, 10.5 amp hour battery shoved into the seat post, 504 watt hours. We'll put this one back in. Now for the second frame integrated battery, I'm going to lift the safety up, pull the lever out, and we'll expose the battery right here. It does lock into place, so you'll need keys to remove it. But first there's a power button here, and you can actually see the current battery percentage, 89% charged currently. I'll turn the key to the right to unlock it. And there's also a handle as well once you get it far enough out. The secondary battery is seven amp hours and it's compact enough to act like a power bank. I'm charging up our favorite communication helmets from Senna. And of course, there's a USB port on the end of the battery. But I want to show you just how small this bike gets while folded. Optionally, you can lower the handlebars. I already have the middle undone from removing that battery. We'll put the kickstand up and you probably want to lower the seat so it doesn't rest on the front chain ring. Though you do want to be mindful of the cable coming out from the back as well. And of course, I forgot to fold the pedals. So there you have it, a small folding electric bike with a massive 17 and a half amp hours of capacity. And that little clip at the front is actually a magnet which connects to the rear. And that makes the bike so much easier to throw in the back of a vehicle knowing it's not going to come unfolded. But that's enough talk about how small this bike is and how much battery it has. Let's get into some first person riding footage. Let's take the Dolphin for a ride. One note, unfortunately, no bottle cage bosses. I have mine in my bike case backpack here, but you might wanna consider our ABC cage with the strap as an optional accessory if you are looking to purchase this electric bike. Hopping on here. This is a class two electric bike, which means a top speed of 20 miles per hour. Whether I'm pedaling or just using the throttle, I have the speedometer app by Coolnix on my favorite cell phone mount. And our first test will be throttle alone. Just to note, the pedal assist level does coincide with the top speed with the throttle. So I have it in pedal assist level five. That of course will take us up to 20 miles per hour. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, throttle only with this 500 watt motor. Display reading 14, there we go, GPS catching up, 17, 18, 19, 20. So for a 500 watt motor, it's not bad performance. I will say though, on this throttle, this is the first type of throttle like this that I've experienced. And it does have a little bit of a spring back. So if you do hold this for a long time, your thumb might get a little bit tired. So just a note there. All right, so we know it can get up to 20 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level one. Again, throttle only. Looks like that's going to hold us at 10 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go up to pedal assist level two. Here, the motor kick in there, 11, 12 miles an hour. See if we're gonna creep up. I think that's gonna be it. All right, pedal assist level three. 13, 14, 15. All right, 14 miles an hour on pedal assist level three, or 15. Pedal assist level four, holding us at 17. And of course, we know what pedal assist level five is going to do at 20 miles per hour. One thing that I think is kind of cool about this display is when you hit the brakes, it does tell you that you're hitting the brakes. So if you ever are trying to troubleshoot why your bike isn't working, uh, that can help because sometimes the, the brakes can be causing the motor not to engage. The other thing I noticed that I haven't seen before is that 
this actually tells me when I'm using pedal assist on the display, it'll read PAS while I'm pedaling. Or if I'm using the throttle, it'll tell me I'm using the throttle too. So minor things, but uh, something that I haven't necessarily seen before. All right, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level one. And I'm gonna shift all the way down. We'll go through all the pedal assist levels and I'll talk about the gearing. All right, here we go, pedal assist level one. And I do believe this is a current base system, which means that it's just going to keep providing me a little bit of power in pedal assist level one. And then the speed, as you can see, it is just gonna creep up, but I do need to shift up second, third gear, maybe even fourth gear. And as I get to those higher speeds, I of course need to shift up. So there is fifth gear, very leisurely cadence. And very easily able to hold me at, you know, 13 miles an hour, 14. Now I did say current base system, which means that's not going to kick off at say 10 miles an hour and just the motor just completely stops helping you. So that is a pretty big ride feel difference depending on some of these uh, different brands and models of electric bikes. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. We'll stay in fifth gear here. 13 miles an hour, 14 miles an hour. Maybe it could go up to six gear. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. Feel the motor there. Hitting 17. Slight hill, hill here. It's 600 feet and the traffic circle will continue straight to stand. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level four. And I'm gonna shift up into seventh gear. And then we are hitting that 19 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, according to the display. There we go, GPS. Now, in my opinion, this is a slightly faster than I'd prefer cadence. Hopefully you can see my legs moving there. We'll get back up to speed in just a second. So I wish there was just a higher gear I could go into. All right, let's go into pedal assist level five and we'll see just how fast I can get up to speed here. And we'll cruise a little bit at 20 miles an hour so you can see what it looks like. And acceleration's pretty good. 17, 18, there's 20 miles an hour. And if you can see my legs moving, that's gonna be the cadence if you wanna provide human power. And at this point, if I really wanted to, I could just slowly spin my legs and I'm basically ghost pedaling. So you have to work a little bit more if you wanna provide human power at 20 miles per hour. So that's how this bike performs on flat ground. Unfortunately, I'm not in the area with our huge hill climb test, but we'll take this up a moderate hill so we can get an idea of the performance of this 500 watt motor. All right, so this is admittedly a very moderate hill, but it's the biggest I could find, so we'll see how this bike performs. We'll do throttle only. And keep in mind, I am a lighter weight rider at around 145 or so pounds. And I wanna be clear with that throttle, it's only if I really hold it in a long time that your thumb might get tired, but like cruising up a hill like this is not a problem. And still holding us at 20. I imagine we'll go down a little bit. There's 19. 18. And back up to 19 as we get to the top of the hill. So small hills, not an issue. Significant hills, usually what I see during our no normal hill climb test with 500 watt motors is right around 10 miles an hour, maybe a little bit higher sometimes a little bit lower with the, what I view as the lower powerful 500 watt motors. But I would imagine this one would still get me up the hill. 
And of course, pedaling is only going to help. It is an electric bike after all. Let's do our brake test with these hydraulic disc brakes. We'll get up to 20 miles per hour and I'll slam on the brakes. All right, display is reading 19, there we go, 20 miles per hour, here we go. And it's a lighter weight bike, no problem stopping you. All right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage. I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Quali Sports Dolphin Plus. The folding e-bike category is flooded with options, not to mention copycats, and there's a reason that historically I haven't reviewed that many folding e-bikes on the channel. That's because generally I recommend folks stick with the more well-known brands because on the whole, the experience will be better. So why did I agree to review the Dolphin Plus from Quali Sports? For some background, most often these lighter weight, more compact folding e-bikes have smaller batteries, sometimes 36 volt systems, and equally disappointing motors. They might be fine for few mile jaunts across the city, especially if you can charge at your destination, but small batteries are very limiting. Not to minimize their usefulness though, especially at oftentimes very low prices. The Dolphin Plus is different. Solving range anxiety with its dual batteries, boasting 17 and a half amp hours of capacity, and it's also a 48 volt system. Now the motor isn't knock your socks off power, but at 500 watts, it's still plenty of power considering the bike size and should be fine for most riders who stick mostly to flat ground. Now I'm not saying the Dolphin is perfect, more on that in a bit, but $16.99 does seem like a fair price for how it's spec and $13.99 for the 10 amp hour version isn't bad either. There are a lot of pluses here. First, the batteries are hidden well and at a glance, it doesn't even seem like this could be a dual battery e-bike, let alone 17 and a half amp hours. The hydraulic disc brakes provide plenty of stopping power and overall, the small wheels with the smaller frame makes it a very approachable e-bike for shorter riders. I was able to fit this e-bike easily into the trunk of a Toyota Camry and that was very satisfying. Thanks to its magnetic clasp, it will even stay folded. The Shimano 7-speed trigger shifter was nice to see in the cockpit, and while we usually see the trend of fatter tires like 3 or 4 inch on most folding e-bikes, it's nice to have an e-bike offered with narrower and more efficient 2.3 inch tires for those that want it. Now what are the considerations? For something I picture a lot of folks using for commuting, I would have liked to see an integrated rear light. In the cockpit, the monochrome display, while easy to read and perfectly functional, is still basic. Perhaps my biggest complaint is the gearing. While a 52 tooth front chainring was a good choice for how I like to ride, it really ought to have an 11 tooth cog for the highest gear so that your legs aren't spinning so fast in the highest gear at the max speed of 20 miles per hour. And the derailleur itself, while not uncommon at this price, is on the entry level of Shimano components. I also noticed a slight delay with the pedal assist, which is more of a personal preference. I don't mind it as much as others. And finally, it would have been nice to have some bottle cage bosses, though yes, something easily solved by visiting our store, shop.ebikeescape.com and picking up a ABC cage with strap. Now I also need to talk about the brand new limited edition Quali Sports Model 5 priced at $19.99 because it solves some of these pain points with the Dolphin and more. Starting out, it is a nine speed cassette with 11 teeth for its highest gear, you also get a torque sensor for a more natural riding experience instead of a cadence sensor, a welcome feature to many. You also get a bit of a surprise in a compact folding e-bike, a suspension fork, though certainly that's going to add to the weight. It also has a slightly upgraded Altus derailleur. If you have decided that any of the Quali Sports e-bikes are for you, one favor, use our link in the description before you make your purchase. It's a free way to support the channel. I can't comment on the company's customer support as it's my first time reviewing one of their models and digging into the company. So if you're an owner, share your experience down in the comment section. They also have various models on Amazon that I'll link below so you can check out the Amazon reviews. Let me know your thoughts on this e-bike, what others are interesting to you at this price point. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.